What's going on everybody? It's Everett here. I hope you're staying safe and sane during these times. So we have week number five of the at home series. So two days. Day number one, we're going to do two longer sections of EMOMs. Day number two, we're going to do a little bit of ab work to start things off, some stability, no moving, and then we're going to do a whole lot of moving. We're going to do a huge ladder. I'll explain what that is, but since you're adding reps to every move, from a starting rep scheme and doing as many rounds, adding as many reps as you can throughout a specific time frame. So let's hop into day number one. And as I just mentioned, for day number one, we are on to 10 minute EMOMs. We're only gonna do two different types of EMOMs, but 10 minutes is gonna be a lot of volume. So we have three movements, eight jumping lunges. I would do eight total, meaning four per side, 12 scissor kicks, 12 per side, meaning 24 total, and six skull crushers or moving planks. So that's a regression. Skull crushers will be more difficult. Jumping lunges. Again, these get very pumpy in the quads and very wobbly in the ankles. So if these are too easy, you could do eight per side, but I would most likely stick with eight total. Not a huge jump, but make sure you clear the ground. Another option is to do a reverse lunge and then jump up to a standing position. So this is a regression in case the jumping lunges are too difficult, but you still wanna get a little bit of dynamic work in and not just do regular lunges. After that, we have scissor kicks. And as always, we are crunching the ribs down to the pelvis, really tight abs and little kicks or big kicks. It's up to you. Just make sure the knees are straight. And again, I would do 12 per side. Skull crushers. So you can see here, we're in a solid plank position. Very important to have the elbows underneath the shoulders here and having your hands closer together is a little bit easier. So you're just extending the elbows using the triceps. As you can see, there's some rotation going on at my shoulders and my elbows. So my biceps are facing forward and then as I press up and straighten the elbows, my biceps and the insides of the elbows rotate internally to face one another. If this is too difficult, you can do good old fashioned moving planks, dropping from elbow, elbow, and then back up hand, hand is one rep. As always, control your wobble. And our second EMOM, another 10 minutes, we have six plank hops. It's like the middle part of a burpee, so they get pretty rough after a while. Six reverse hypers. Make sure you're getting a full range of motion of those. They're very quick. And then 10 step ups, most likely 10 step ups total, five per side. Step ups, find something to step up to. So the higher it is, the more difficult it's going to be. If you have a weight, you can use a weight and it really doesn't matter what leg you step down on after the step up, mix it up, step up with the left and then down with the right or step up with the left and step down with the left, something like that. Two things to watch out for with the step ups. As you get more and more tired, or if you started out with something really tall to step up on, you'll end up using your second leg to finish the step up. So if you step up with the right leg, you wanna fully extend that right leg before that left leg touches the thing you're standing on. Don't do a little quarter step up with the right leg and then use the left leg to help you out. The second thing you wanna watch out for is dropping the knee inside the body or having a valgus knee. So you want to have that knee right over the ankle, really strong position. This is going to take ankle and arch support in the lower leg and then the side glutes are really going to help control that knee. So watch out for getting full extension and watch out having a weak knee. After that, plank hops again, solid plank, and then jump into a sumo squat, which is a wide squat, heels and toes on the ground, pull the hands off the ground, and then jump back into a solid plank. Try to keep your back fairly neutral, low back fairly flat here. Too much rounding could put pressure on the lower lumbars. Reverse hyper, again, very quick movement. We're keeping the toes on the ground. We're retracting all of the spine, the glutes, and trying to pull as much of the upper body off the ground as possible. Day two. So we're gonna start out with some static work. 30 seconds on, 20 seconds off. So we're gonna do 30 seconds of a six inch hold, 20 seconds rest, 30 seconds of a single arm plank. You could do 15 seconds per side or 30 per seconds per side, 20 seconds rest, and then 30 seconds skydiver hold. 20 seconds rest, three rounds of that total. Six inch hold, again, just like the scissor kicks we covered, we're crunching the ribs down hard. 
Straight knees, hold the feet six inches off the ground. Really breathe into your lower stomach and your obliques and hold that in for the six inch hold. Single arm plank, as always, spread the feet out. Even hips, even shoulders facing the ground. Nice pressure in the big toes that will help you stay even. And then very active shoulder, nice spread out fingers. Switch sides when you feel comfortable. You could rest in between sides. And again, 15 seconds per side or 30 seconds per side per round. If that's too tough, you can always just do a normal plank. Skydiver, we're retracting the posterior chain and having as little of the body on the ground as possible. Hamstrings, glutes, low back, rhomboids of the shoulders. Try to pull as much of the body off the ground as you can and hold it. Second portion of day number two. So we've got a 20 minute ladder. So you're gonna work through as much of this as you can in 20 minutes. We have five movements and we're starting out different numbers. If you get through one through five, you're gonna add a rep to every single movement. Get through it again, add another rep to every single movement. So starting out, we have jumping jacks, nothing new here. Surprisingly, most people cheat jumping jacks and they start to do weird stuff with their ankles and their knees. You can see I have really strong hip position, ankle position, knee position. My toes are always facing forward. It's a little touch and go on the toes. I'm not collapsing my knees in. And I'm doing a full swing with my arm. My hands are touching on every single rep. Mountain climbers, we've covered the standards for these before. Solid plank, nice spread out fingers. The toes aren't touching as we pull the knees up. It's as quick as we can. Really, really good speed here. Thread the needles. We've got the shoulder back and down, elbow underneath the shoulder. Hips are in line with the shoulder and the knee. And as we rotate, we're trying to touch something behind us or imagine like we're touching something behind us. You can see my arms become parallel to one another as I rotate and my chest is facing the ground. A lot of people just move their arm and they don't actually rotate on that bottom shoulder. Hand release push-ups. This is a full push-up from a dead stop. You can see my hands are coming off the ground in between every rep. My entire body is moving off the ground as a unit. What a lot of people do is they just lift the hands and it looks kind of weird like this. What you want to do is retract the shoulder blades and lift the elbows right into the air. Keep them on top of the wrist. Normal sit-ups. These are not crunches. So we're trying to touch the chest to the upper thighs and the knees. You can use an arm swing as you get more and more tired or maybe these are difficult for you right from the get-go. You can also use a weight to keep you from moving around on the floor and that'll also give you a standard to touch to make sure you're getting full reps every single rep. And as always, you can put your hands above your head to make this more difficult or even use a weight on the chest. However, we're gonna be doing a lot of reps here and we wanna go fairly fast. So if you use a weight, you're probably gonna start slowing down. And that is it for day number two. All right, way to go, another week underneath your belt. So at this point, you should start to see some progress in your fitness and your ability to handle this amount of volume. So a couple options, take the style of workouts we've been doing, the EMOMs, the AMRAPs, the Tabatas, and make up a workout on your own for a third day each week. Or since it's been five weeks, go back to week number one of this series and redo one of those workouts as well. And obviously I have more programs on my website as PDF downloadable eBooks, specifically for doing workouts at home. So I have some for you know a normal gym strength training, but I've got a couple for no equipment at home or apartment gym workouts. So link in the description, check those out and see you in the next video.